yeah, 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 yeah. This is your boy, Tone DeShields the second, and you guys are locked in on your dose of Chalk It Up Sports, where no matter if we win or if we lose, we just got to charge it to the game. Always grateful to be, to be in the presence of greatness. You people are amazing. You people are tremendous. And you guys always stay loyal to the soil. Like I said, it's always gracious to be in the presence of greatness. I'm grateful. And, uh, you know, today so far has been a very interesting day. Um, a good day. A good day. The sun is shining bright over here. And one thing I got to say, you know, the content game is something else. The content game is something else because what happens is, you know, you see a lot of uh, varying opinions about the same topics. And it's so easy for people to fall on so many or so far of a spectrum from each other. Right. It's so it's so easy for people to land on two different sides of the planet when it comes to a topic. And uh, I think it's important regardless of what side you stand on is to have some level of conviction, right? Um, or to have some level of reasoning behind why you believe what you believe. Um, and sometimes you may not be so far on either side of the spectrum. Maybe, maybe you may be right in the middle. Maybe your genuine opinion is uh, I'm kind of I kind of see both sides of this thing. And we got and we have to leave room for that, you know, in media. Um, in communicating as humans, we have to leave room for the gray area. We have to leave room for the nuance. And uh, not enough of that is in the sports talk. Not enough of that is in the music talk, um, you know, the culture, the hip hop talk. N not enough of it is in sports. So um, I try to give you guys that here. I try to make sure I give you guys, especially if you're new to the show, um, if you want to know what I'm all about. I'm all about trying to tell you the player's perspective the team perspective, and then my perspective and where I kind of fall on the line of such. Because, you know, when it comes to when it comes to the league, when it comes to the NFL or any sports league, right, most of the talking points stem from player versus organization or, or organization versus player, however you want to slice it, right? There's always some sort of turbulence between a player or an organization or between two players, whatever it may be. My goal is always to give you guys both sides of the coin and then tell you which side I fall on more so. Or maybe I'm right there in the middle. Maybe I, maybe I understand both perspectives, and I don't have too much of a strong opinion about it. Uh, so that's what we do here. Always going to give you guys the real. Always going to give you guys my honest opinion, regardless if you agree with it or not. But make sure you guys smash that like button. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the show. I appreciate you guys. Once again, if you're new to the show, my name is Tone D. Shields the second. And you guys are locked in on Chalk It Up Sports, where no matter if we win or if we lose, we just got to charge it to the game. Now, you guys saw the thumbnail. You saw the thumbnail. And ultimately, we're going to have some fun today. We're going to do some mock drafts. We're going to we're going to discuss what the Philadelphia Eagles should do, you know, going into the draft. And, you know, now that things are starting to become clearer. You know, Devontae Smith got his contract. Um, they made the free agent signings they made, bringing in Saquon Barkley at running back, Bryce Huff at edge rusher, um, C.J. Gardner-Johnson at safety slash nickel, uh, a hybrid guy. Uh, they brought in Matt Hennessy at guard slash center. You know, he's a combo offensive lineman, um, a rotational guy. They also brought in Devin White, uh, Oren Burks, um, Julian Okora, a linebacker as well. They brought in two wide receivers in Paris Campbell and Devontae Parker. They brought in Zach Bond. Um, they made a lot of moves bringing in um, some DBs, you know, Tyler Hall, the corner that used to play for the Raiders, the nickel used to play for the Raiders, uh, PJ Mustafa, a DT. So they've made they made a lot of different moves, no matter how big or small. They've made a lot of roster moves to supplement this roster and to give them a little bit of a clearer view as we get closer to the NFL draft. Now, what I want to do here, I definitely want to bring up the Philadelphia Eagles depth chart while while we're on the conversation. 
because I want to get a I want to get a quick look at this roster with you guys, and then we're going to get into our mock draft. And you know, even prior to getting into the mock draft, right? Let's try to let's try to go through the depth chart and figure out where we can use the most bodies. Maybe we can maybe we need an influx um, of talent. So I think that's something. I think that's something that's you know that's worth exploring here. Um, again, if you guys are just hopping into the live stream, make sure you smash that like button. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the show, especially if you're new. Um, and look, before you subscribe, right, if you're new, before you even subscribe, stick around for a little bit, catch the vibes, check the pulse, see if you like the ecosystem, see if you like the vibe that I'm setting, see if you like the tone that I'm setting. And um, if you like it, subscribe. If you don't, hey, it was fun having you. Come back again if you want to get a different um, energy on a different day. You never know. Um, but overall, just make sure you actually like what you're hearing. Make sure uh, you have conviction behind that subscribe and uh, continue to comment below in the live chat. I appreciate you guys as always. So um, let's do some quick shout outs real quick before I bring up the depth chart and then get into um, the Eagles draft needs and talk about the mock and all that kind of stuff. So shout out to my man, Troll Gaming. Troll King Gaming is in the building. The Goat Michi was good, my man. Austin, Bills Mafia was good. Wiz, what's going on? Steve Ike, PFT, my man, my OG. What's going on, Marcus? Hope all is well with you and the family as well. So, uh, yeah, right. So let's let's get let, let's let's look at the Philadelphia the Philadelphia Eagles depth chart right now as it stands right now. So this was updated uh, April eleventh as of yeah as of April eleventh at two thirty seven p.m. Eastern time. So. Here we are. So as of right now, let me zoom in a little bit, see if I can get a better, a closer view. Okay. Oh, uh, well, I might be a little too close. All right. So on offense, this is what we have on offense. This is the Philadelphia Eagles depth chart right now on offense. Uh, at running back, you have Saquon Barkley, Kenneth Gainwell, Lou Nichols, the third, and you have David, uh, you have, uh, you have uh, Terry and Davis Price. At quarterback, you have Jalen Hurts, Kenny Pickett, Tanner McKee, and Will Greer. At tight end, you have Dallas Goddard, Grant Cocotero, Albert, Albert O, CJ Uzoma, Noah Togiai, and EJ Jenkins. At right tackle, you have Lane Johnson and LaRaven Clark. At right guard, the Philadelphia Eagles have Tyler Steen, Brett Toth, and Darian Kennard. At center, you have Cam Jurgens, Lasidus Smith, and Jason Poe. At left guard, you have Landon Dickerson and Matt Hennessy. At left tackle, you have Jordan Melata and Fred Johnson. Uh, at your wide receiver positions, you have a you have Devontae Smith, AJ Brown, Devontae Parker, Paris Campbell. Joseph Nagata, Griffin Herbert, Brent Covey, Jacob Harris, Austin Watkins Jr., Shaquan Davis. So, um, I, I'm familiar with jo I'm familiar with Joseph Nagata, Joseph Nagata, and obviously Brent Covey, um, Paris Campbell, Devontae Parker, obviously those guys. Um, but uh, Griffin Herbert or Austin Watkins, Jacob Harris. Shaquan Davis. I'm not familiar with those guys' game, their games at all. I'm not familiar with anything about them in, in any capacity. Um, but as of right now, just looking at the offense, right? Just looking at the offense, I want to check the temperature with you guys. When you look at this offense right now, as it's currently built, where do you see the most dire need? Because I look at this and I say, all right, I believe wide receiver. I, I believe wide receiver has um, some 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 okay depth. Okay depth uh, with you know behind AJ Brown and Devontae Smith. You have Paris Campbell, Devontae Parker. You know that's that's you can do a lot worse when it comes to your depth at the position. Paris Campbell, obviously a younger guy compared to Devontae Parker. Devontae Parker is the OG in the room, but I think. Behind AJ Brown and Devontae Smith, um, the depth is not bad. You know, starting at Paris Campbell, then Devontae Parker, and then going beyond that is obviously a tough sell. But I mean, it's hard.
to have so many talented wide receivers on your roster. Um, I think this is I, I think this is where the quarterback comes into play, right? Your quarterback has to be able to maximize these guys and their ability. Um, in particular, the guys beyond AJ Brown and Devontae Smith, right? Jalen Hurts has to find a way to maximize a guy like Paris Campbell and has to trust him, right? He has to trust Devontae Parker and maximize him. He has to be able to trust Joseph Nagata, Griffin Herbert, if those guys ever have to see the field at any point, Brenton Covey, Jacob Harris. He has to find a way to make those guys better or at least or at least help them establish some level of confidence if they ever have to touch the field. So I think Paris Campbell, Devontae Parker, behind A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith, not bad. Not bad, not great, but not bad either. I think if you go to most teams, if, if you go to most teams beyond that number two guy, I mean, it's probably a coin flip for the third or fourth guy. So uh, maybe they could use another wide receiver. Maybe they draft one. Uh, but I think I think the most dire need, I think they could use some more depth in the offensive line. Um, I would love for them to draft another tackle, um, in particular for the right side. We have no idea how much time is left or how much sand is left in Elaine Johnson's hourglass. We have no idea. So I think it's important if the Philadelphia Eagles do draft um, a tackle, uh, a right tackle in this upcoming draft. It doesn't have to be a first rounder. It doesn't even have to be a second. But I think the Philadelphia Eagles should draft a right tackle in this upcoming draft. I think that would be conducive to their success um, in the event um, Lane Johnson gets hurt. Um, anything can happen, right, in, in case he retires the following season. Um, I'm not completely sold on the Raven Clark. So I would love to bring in a young guy. Um, to compete with LaRiv and Clark to be that backup tackle um, that can maybe be a swing tackle for Jordan Milata and um, Lane Johnson, a versatile guy, a guy who's confident in his ability. Uh, I wouldn't mind getting some more depth uh, at the guard position either. You know, Matt Hennessy, I mean, they have him slated at left guard, and that's what he played with the Falcons, and he also played center for the Falcons as well. Um, didn't really play too much right guard, but – I would definitely love another left guard. I think Matt Hennessy is going to be versatile enough to be that swing guard slash swing center. I think he's going to be asked to be that swing guy um, between the left and right guard and even the center spot. God forbid if something happens to Cam Jurgens or Landon Dickerson. I think that's one of the reasons they got Matt Hennessy because although although they paid Landon Dickerson and although Cam Jurgens is supposed to be the future, those two guys in particular have had their fair share of ticky tack injuries. So having a guy like Matt Hennessy um, that has a lot of starting experience, um, a young veteran in this league, um, it wouldn't hurt having him to be a swing guy between Landon Dickerson and Cam Jurgens. But I think you probably need another offensive lineman that you want to develop. Uh, LaRaven Clark, he is what he is. Brett Toth, he is what he is. Um, Lissita Smith, Jason Poe, Darian Kennard. You know, I, again, again, I don't know too much about those guys, but – I think they could probably use another offensive lineman. Actually, I think they should probably lead this draft with two offensive linemen, at least a tackle and another guard. I think that would be um, really smart. Um, again, it doesn't have to be in the first round. It does not have to be in the first round at all. But I think they should definitely consider drafting uh, another right tackle and another guard um, just to add to that depth. You never know what you might land on. Uh you know, big big year coming up for Tyler Steen. And then, you know, running back, you know, I look at Saquon Barkley. I look at Kenneth Gainwell, the other two guys, Lou Nichols and, and Terry and Davis Price. You know, Kenny Gainwell is a guy that I'm, I'm not – I haven't been blown away by him. I haven't been blown away by him. So – I think this is a big year for Kenny Gainwell to maximize his opportunities playing next to a guy like Saquon Barkley. I think it's clear that Saquon is the three down back and Kenny Gainwell is going to have to make the most of his opportunities when he gets them. Um, is it possible for Lou Nichols or Tyrion Davis Price to outplay Kenny Gainwell in training camp? Now, obviously the Eagles drafted Kenny Gainwell. They're not going to bench him or put him on the practice squad, but can Lou Nichols and Terry and Davis Price, are those guys going to be competing for that final spot at running back, right? The third spot. Likely so. 
Um, but I think on offense, they're pretty good overall, but I would like more offensive line depth, in particular a right tackle and a swing guard maybe. And um, how many draft picks do they have? Let me double check that because I don't want to overdo it on offense. I don't want to. I don't want to overdo it on offense. Knowing all the moves they made. Okay. All right. So to me, okay. So as of right now. The Philadelphia Eagles have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight draft picks. They have eight draft picks. Three coming in the first two rounds. So yeah, I think I would limit it there. I would limit it to I would limit it to probably two offensive linemen and, and, and call it a day and maybe find an undrafted running back to add to it. But overall, uh, I think they should probably draft two offensive linemen in this draft class. Um, with those eight draft picks, you can definitely dedicate two of them to the offensive line. Um, doesn't have to be the first two rounds at all. But I think you should, I, I think you should leave this draft with at least two offensive linemen, and then the rest you can put on the defense. That's what I think. All right, let's scroll down to the defensive side. And again, we're going to get, if you're just joining, the goal here, is to review the Philadelphia Eagles depth chart. And then uh, we're going to assess where we feel like they need the most, maybe more talent, maybe more bodies. And then we're going to get into our mock draft and we're going to play around with that. So make sure you guys stay tuned in. The mock draft is coming soon. We're just we're just trying to cross our T's and dot our I's when it comes to this roster. So just make sure you guys are on the right side of things here. So smash that like button. Make sure you guys are subscribed. Shout out to the YouTube family. We got 31 of you guys in the building. Shout out to the Twitter slash X family. Uh, appreciate you guys being here. 24 of you guys in the building. Let's, you know, let's, let's, let's get those likes up. Let's get those likes up. Also, Howie and Nick Sirianni spoke to the media. Um, as usual, didn't really say too much. Didn't reveal anything. Um, the reality is we, we never really get too much out of those press conferences. We never get too much out of those conversations. Um, all you can really, really get out of it is try to pay attention to what they're not saying, right? Try to read between the lines. Try to pay attention to body language. Uh, try to pay attention to how they're answering questions. Is a guy stammering? Does he, does he, does he not sound confident in what he's saying? And still to this day, I look at Nick Sirianni as a guy who still fumbles behind the microphone. At some point, at, at some point, you have to settle in. At some point, some of these questions are going to be like clockwork for you. And being being a third year head coach, I'm, I'm I'm shocked that he still acts surprised by some of these questions. He just he, it's, there are moments where I, I hear a question and immediately I know how to answer it because they kind of gave me what I they kind of told you what the, what you needed to say in the question. Just keep it simple. You don't owe them anything. All you have to do is answer their question to the best of your ability. And maybe he is answering the questions to the best of his ability. Maybe Nick Sirianni is doing the best he can up there um, in those press conferences. And I want to, you know, give some sort of grace towards that. Maybe he is doing the best he can. Some people just aren't good public speakers, you know, when it comes to things like that, right? The microphone in your face, you got a bunch of people sitting in front of you. Some people just don't do well in those situations. And it's, and it's reasonable, I guess. But I guess when you're a football coach, also, you're talking to a bunch of football players. You're trying to get them to believe in the message. Um, you would think that's kind of the same thing, but in essence, it's really not. The difference is those players, you can trust those players with everything you say, and those players aren't trying to use whatever you say against you. Whereas though on the media side, you have to be very careful what you say because it can be twisted and contorted into into whatever. So um, I guess there is a difference ultimately. I guess I kind of answered my own question. There is a difference in leading a room full of players versus trying to lead a room full of reporters who are just trying to, you know, play nip and tuck, you know, with every, you know, with every word you say. 
Uh, but anyway, we got sidetracked. We're, we're going to discuss the press conference a little later if we get some time. Um, again, it was kind of boring. But let's look at the defensive side here. And then we can assess some more needs before we continue to the mock draft. So, and remind you, Vic Fangio is the DC. So you have you have uh, at defensive end, or see this is where things get a little funny. But I'll just read it as it states here. Wait, since since when was Moro Ujomo a DN? I don't know like how you're doing this, but nonetheless, on the defensive line, you have Milton Williams, Jordan Davis, Jalen Carter, Mora Ujomo, PJ Mustafa, Marlon Tuipolotu, Noah Ellis, Thomas Booker the Fourth, uh, Bryce Huff, Brandon Graham. At linebacker, you have Nicobe Dean, Devin White. Oh, excuse me, I almost forgot. So let me let, let me do this again because this is kind of wonky, if we're being honest. So on the D line, right? Guys that are going to be rushing the passer, all that kind of stuff. You got Milton Williams. Jordan Davis, Jalen Carter, Josh Sweat, Nolan Smith, Brandon Graham, Marlon Toypolotu, PJ Mustafa, Moro Ujomo, Noah Ellis, Thomas Booker the Fourth, Teron Jackson, and at linebacker. You have Nicobe Dean, Devin White, Zach Bond, Oren Burks, Brandon Smith, Ben Van Sumeren. You also have Bryce Huff as an edge rusher as well. Uh, you got Julian Acora at linebacker as well. At corner, you have Darius Slay, James Bradbury, Avante Maddox, Keely Ringo, Zach McPherson, Makai Gardner, Tristan McCup. I'm sorry, um, uh, Keely Ringo, is that McPherson? Makai Gardner, Eli Ricks, Tyler Hall, Mario Goodrich, Taiwan Mullen, Josh Job. At, set, at safety, you got CJ Gardner Johnson, Reed Blankenship, Sidney Brown, Tristan McCollum. You know, so when you when you guys look at that defense, where do you guys see the needs? Chin A says Milton Williams can play end in the 3 4. You see, Milton Williams is a uh, he's he's what you call a tweener, right? Milton Williams is the kind of guy he's not he's not he's he's not the biggest DT, but he's also um not the not the slimmest edge rusher, right? He's a tweener, you know, just from his physical uh, stature. But overall, I think Milton Williams is a versatile player that you can really get some. Uh, Get some quality play from LJ's father says all pro all pro Nolan Smith against 20 sacks book it that's that's uh that's high ad, that's high admiration for a guy who hasn't really shown us anything I admire the optimism I admire the optimism but he has to do a lot he has he, he has to show you something before you can even say he's going to give you a 20 sec season a 20 sec season is not easy to come by relative time work says in a 3 4 you are likely only sending one one outside linebacker one or one off ball linebacker at a time the other the other time they're in coverage relative time work says which of the listed off ball linebackers on his roster can cover that's a good question that's a really, really good question. I know a lot of these guys are athletic, but can they cover? I know Zach Bond and Devin White have speed, right? Nicole Dean has speed, but can they cover? It's a good question. As Blunt was good, my man. Welcome to the show. LJ says, I got faith in Nolan Tone. I see. 
I see. You said he you said he having the 20 sack season. That's 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 unwavering faith. I commend you for that. I commend you. All right. So now that we looked at the defense side, you know, I think they can definitely stand to add all over this thing, right? Um, they could use another corner, in my opinion. They could use another safety, another linebacker, another uh edge rusher. You know, I think they're okay at DT right now. I think they're okay. Um, I don't think they need to go and jump out the window for another D tackle. I kind of like where they are right now with that. Uh, but do they need another guy on the edge to supplement what you what you what you can get from Bryce Huff and Josh Sweat and then Nolan Smith and Brandon Graham? This is a huge year for Nolan Smith. He very huge year, huge year for Nicobe Dean. This is a huge year for all those Georgia boys. Um, can Nolan Smith prove that to be a legitimate? edge rusher in this league he's undersized so he's not going to beat you with power he has to he has to develop a deep enough bag of moves to couple with that athleticism because he's not going to overpower some of these guys he's just not and here's another thing too zach bond when he was with the saints they used him in a multitude of ways they dropped him back in coverage. They used him to rush the passer. He was he was in run defense. Um, he did a he did a lot. He was a versatile guy. So could Zach Bond kind of be that joker, right? Can he be that? You know, can he kind of you know can he be that guy that kind of just floats around and you don't know what he's doing? Is he is he rushing the passer? Is he dropping back in coverage? He has a lot of speed and a lot of athleticism at the position. So you really don't know. Um, I you don't really know what Zach Bond's ceiling is in this in this defense. Um, he's a player that I'm really intrigued to see how they use him. Out of all the players that they brought in, even more so than Devin White, I'm 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 extremely intrigued by Zach Bond. I know a lot of people look at Zach Bond and say really tone, but I don't know. It's is I, I I'm intrigued by his skill set. I'm fascinated by how the Saints used them in various ways, especially on the back end of the, of the 2023 season. And um, I'm curious to know what Vic Fangio saw in them because we know Vic Fangio you know, pointed that guy out and how we and those guys just did what they could to get the deal done. And he's a young guy, one-year deal, looking to get paid. He knows that. So he's going to want to come in and do his thing. He's looking for a long-term contract somewhere. I mean, he's, he's, he's looking for some legitimate security. So... Zach Bond, in my opinion, is the most fascinating prospect on the defensive side. That's just for me. Um, that's not me. That's not me trying to call him the best. That's not me trying to say he's a guy you should watch for. But he's a guy that, I, that he's a guy that I'm personally fascinated by, and I'm curious to see how they use him. Um, but I think when you look at this defense as a whole, you can see that they, you can see that they need um some some pieces to supplement what they already have um it wouldn't hurt you it wouldn't hurt you to get another linebacker it wouldn't hurt you to get another corner or safety it wouldn't hurt him at all i think he used all the talent because at this point at this point and we're going to and again i hope i'm glad you guys are sticking around we're going to get into the mock draft but at this point i think it's so imperative for the philadelphia eagles to start to develop and nurture um the new defensive core because as of right now the current defensive core is relatively unstable. And this, and this is why I say this. You know, Jalen Carter only entering his second year. Um, hopefully he can repeat what he did last year and some. Jordan Davis entering the third year, but am I sold on him in the long term? Not quite yet. Not yet. Not saying I won't ever will be, but just not yet. Um, I like the player still. Uh, Milton Williams. Entering a contract year, will the Eagles bring him back? Will he want to test the open market and get paid? DTs are getting big money. Bryce Huff, a, 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 a relatively a relatively unknown player in this defense. What will he What will he provide to the Philadelphia Eagles defense? How how, how dominant can he be in this new role in this new situation that he's in? You know, Nicobe Dean. It goes without saying. 
Devin White, can he turn his career around? Josh Sweat, can you know, uh, you know, can his motor run hot all season? Darius Slay and James Bradbury, can they continue to stay ahead of Father Time? CJ Gardner Johnson, can he stay healthy for the whole season? Reed Blankenship, um, uh, can he do enough in the off season physically to make sure that um he's a better um tool out there, especially in pass coverage? Uh, Vontae Maddox, can he stay healthy? Keely Ringo, um, can he take his game to the next level? Sidney Brown, how will he fare coming off of that ACL tear? Makai Gardner, Eli Ricks, um, they had opportunities last season. What can they do to build off of it? So, you know, you you look at this defense and you have a lot of and you have a lot of questions on that defense right now. You got a lot of players that you're still waiting to see some legitimate play from. So, I think the Philadelphia Eagles can definitely stand to go in this draft and just add to that defensive core because you have to figure out what your defense or you have to figure out rather the players that you're going to want to invest in in the long term on the defensive side, the players that you're going to want to, that you're going to want to build your defense around. That's why a guy like Fletcher Cox and Brandon Graham, you know, those guys were so pivotal, right? Because um, you were able to build your defense around those kind of guys. Remember when we had Malcolm Jenkins, you know, things like that. So uh, overall, they got to do they they, they got to do a better job in nurturing and cultivating this you know this defensive core, um, and I think that has to be done during the draft because if you hit on draft picks, it gives you so much flexibility, um, not just from um, a, 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 a gameplay standpoint, but it gives you flexibility when it comes to you know the financials. Um, if you're drafting guys and you have them on four year or five year deals, if you include the fifth year option, right? If you're drafting well on defense, you get the talent, plus you get the you get the luxury of the frugality. You get the luxury of a frugal contract. That's why it's so imperative for Harry Roseman to hit to hit in this draft class. He has to hit, especially on the defensive side of the ball. <clears throat> but we're going to get into the mock draft. My man S. Blunt says you may have discussed it already. But did you see the Smith and Howie Seriani interviews? I did. I did. Um, I didn't get too deeply into them, um, but you pretty much know what they're about. Devontae Smith, obviously, you know, he wanted to be here. He didn't want to be anywhere else. He felt like this is where he's supposed to be. And I'm happy for him. I'm happy for Devontae Smith. Um, Howie and Seriani, you never really get you, you never really get much from those interviews, in my humble opinion. I think what you're what you're really going into those interviews looking for, you look you're kind of going you're, you're kind of going into it like okay what's the vibe what's the energy what what are you guys what are you guys not saying um you're trying to read in between the lines when it comes to uh you know when it comes to um, a lot of those press conferences sometimes I sometimes I'm listening to those press conferences and I and I say to myself all right I'm you're not saying anything new you're not saying anything different you're not enlightening you're not enlightening me at all um and besides right this is i'm 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 one of those people where i say hey listen pay attention to what they do not what they say pay attention to what they do and not what they say right and so far when i think about what they've done in particular, on the defensive side, they brought in, they traded Hassan Reddick. They brought in another edge rusher to replace him. They brought back BG. Fletcher Cox retired. You bring in Tyler Hall at nickel. You bring back Avante Maddox at nickel. You bring back Sidney Garner Johnson at safety. You extend Reed Blankenship. You bring in Devin White, Oren Burke, Zach Bond, PJ Mustafa, Julian Nakora. You bring in Terrell Lewis at linebacker. So overall, based off of the moves they made in, in particular at corner, right? What are the odds of them actually drafting a corner in the first round? They brought in two corners via free agency, and they still got Isaiah Rogers waiting to be approved by the league. So, based off of that, is it likely the Philadelphia Eagles draft the corner in the first round? Probably not. Probably not. <clears throat>
But then you look at losing Fletcher Cox. You look at them trading Hassan Reddick. You think about Josh Sweat in the contract year. Although they restructured and extended, they restructured and gave him more money up front. Josh Sweat, contract year. Milton Williams, contract year. Uh, Nolan Smith going into the second season. Jordan Davis going to his third. Jalen Carter going into his second season. You know, you have some players. I, I think Marlon T, I think, is in a contract year too, right? If I'm not mistaken. I think Marlon T is in a contract year. So, overall, and then James Bradbury, like, overall, you look at this team and you say to yourself, you have to consider – what life could be like without Josh Sweat? What life could be like without Milton Williams? And that's and 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 overall, you gotta you gotta draft well on defense. And just based off of the moves they made, there's a, there's a likelihood there's a likelihood that they may not go corner in the first round. There's 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 a, there's a strong likelihood they do not go corner in the first round because again, they signed two corners of free agency. And then they have Isaiah Rogers waiting to get approved, which he will most likely. So, so overall, they brought in three corners. They still got Keely Ringo, Makai Garner. They, Josh Joe, you know, they got guys, they got guys that they want to really continue to develop. So they may not go corner in the first round. They really may not. Uh, I really, at this point, I think, I think the first round is going to be on the D line. I think the first round is going to be on the D-line. And here's another thing, too, right? Depending on how the season goes, depending on depending on how the season goes, right? If, if the Eagles – okay, right? Follow me here. If the Eagles draft an edge rusher and Nolan Smith proves he can play, uh, you know, BG rides off into the sunset, you do you ex, like what's your plan for Josh Sweat? Do you extend Josh Sweat? You know, how's that going to go, right? Um, I'm just because Brandon Graham is going to retire after the season. He's going to retire, so it's fairly. It and I don't know if Brandon Graham's even going to get a lot of snaps this year. So when I think about it from that perspective, actually, it's entirely plausible that the Philadelphia Eagles go edge rusher in the first round because we saw. We saw how they used BG last year. We saw that. They didn't really use him the way we thought. So do they draft an edge rusher to be a part of that four or five man rotation between Bryce Huff, Josh Sweat, Nolan Smith, and Brandon Graham? Do they add a fifth guy in the fold? What's their plan with this new defensive coordinator, Vic Fangio, and with the new look NFL with these defenses? I know a lot of people talk about the whole 4 3 3 4 thing. These teams are playing nickel most of the time. There's there, there's typically five DBs on the field at most at most times, and ha- most teams are ev- are hardly ever in the base formation because it's a passing league. So we think about from that perspective. We think about from that perspective. You know how can this thing pan out in terms of Vic Fangio's vi- vision for the defense? It all remains to be seen. But look, I did I did enough politicking. I did enough. I did enough talking let's get to the main event right let's get to the mock draft that's exactly why you guys came here so let's get right to it let's not waste any more of your time i appreciate you guys for being a part of the show i'm your guy tone to show the second you guys are locked in on chalk it up sports where no matter if we win or if we lose we just got to charge it to the game make sure you smash the like button if you actually like the show make sure you guys subscribe to the channel if you're uh fascinated and, 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 and want to continue to be a part of the the chalk it up mafia if you want to if you want to come back for a special time, make sure you guys are subscribed and make sure you guys hit the notification bell so you can stay abreast, stay on top of everything going on with the show. So make sure you guys stay uh, locked in as much as you possible, as much as you guys possibly can. I know you have a ton of options out there and you're still kicking it with me and I do not take that for granted. So make sure you guys stay locked in. Um, it's always appreciated. Now. Oh, sorry about that. Let's get to the mock draft. So this is the one I like to use. One second. All right. So we're obviously picking for the Philadelphia Eagles. We're gonna we're gonna st- we're gonna start out with. 
Yeah, we're going to do a seven-round mock draft, okay? Seven round. I'm going to put it on fast because sometimes it takes forever. Okay. Okay, let's get this show in a row, you guys. All right. Nope, San Fran. Kick rocks. Mm, interesting. Interesting. Wait, let me see who's who was taken. Chop Robinson's gone to Miami. Offensive tackle, Talis Fuaga, gone. J.C. Latham, gone. Brian Thompson, gone to... The Bengals, interesting. Leatu Latu, edge rusher to the Jags. Dallas Turner to the Seahawks. Queen Mart, uh, Queen Mitchell to the Colts. Troy Fontenot to the Saints. Amarius Mims to the Raiders. Brock Bowers to the Broncos. JJ McCarthy to the Vikings. Hmm. Jared Verse to the Bears, Roma Dunze to the Falcons, Taryn Arnold to the to the Titans, Joe Alt to the Giants. I can see that. Uh Marvin Harrison Jr. to the Chargers. Interesting. Malik Neighbors. Malik Neighbors being selected ahead of Marvin Harrison. Interesting. Jaden Daniels to the Patriots. Drake May to the Commanders. Caleb Williams to the Bears. Okay. Now here's the thing, you guys. Listen up. Listen up. So the Vikings, the Vikings want to trade. The, the Vikings want to trade. I like this trade actually. Just you know, just to keep it transparent. Um, the Vikings want to pick, you know, want to swap picks and they want to give me an additional pick on top of that. Um I like it. I like this, so I'm gonna accept it. Let's see who they pick though. Ah, they chose Nate Wiggins. So I'm, they chose Nate Wiggins. So okay, I don't like this trade, so I'm rejecting that. I don't like that. Reject that. Okay. So this is interesting. The Vikings and the Eagles swap picks and the Vikings also gave an additional pick as well. So I accepted the trade. So now we're at 23. So we have Johnny Newton, DT out of Illinois, Byron Murphy, the second DT out of Texas, Cooper DeJean, safety out of Iowa. Graham Barton. Kool-Aid is right here. Adani Mitchell out of Texas. Xavier Worthy out of Texas. This is interesting. This is interesting for sure. Um, I'm going to go with Cooper DeJean. Because I feel like I can use him in a multitude of ways. I feel like I can use Cooper DeJean in nickel, in, in nickel setups. I can use him as a safety. I can use Cooper DeJean as this hybrid player, a physical player that's just that's super athletic. And he can just completely shift the complexion of your defense because of the athleticism, because of the versatility, because of the ball skills. Um, I think Cooper DeJean is a, is a perfect fit in Philly at the, you know for, for that spot. So let's see here. All right. Do I trade back eight picks and get it? Nah, we're, we're rejecting that. We're rejecting this. Reject, reject. All right. So let's see who's left on the board. So, so far, so far we've drafted Cooper DeJean. Let's see. Let's read some of your comments. Prince Swayze says that's a lot of corners on the team. Well, me personally, I'm using I'm using Cooper DeJean as a uh, as a as a as a as a safety. I'm using him as a safety. Relative time work says Edron Cooper is still on your board at 50. Chin A says take Cooper before he goes. As Blunt says, slot outside safety and returner. Yeah, he's very, very versatile. Okay, so a lot of you guys are happy with Dijon. Okay. Cameron Holmes says Jackson Powers easily. Huh. 
Easily, huh? Hmm. But he's a he's a center though. He's a center. All right, let's see. All right, nonetheless. Um Um uh, I want Xavier legit. But I'm going to go Edron Cooper, linebacker out of Texas A&M. Oh, damn. No, I'm rejecting this. Rejecting that. Damn. I wish he would have still, if if he would have been there, a pick. Oh, damn. Okay, it's all right. No problem. Because I would have I loved to get Xavier. If I could have stole Xavier legit again. The Rams jumped me. The Rams jumped me there. The Rams jumped me there. So Cameron Holmes feels like we need O-line depth and need to shore up the interior because you lost Kelsey. Now, here's the thing. I I, I have I have full intention of drafting an offensive lineman, but I, but I, I don't feel desperate enough to draft them high because I trust... I trust the Philadelphia Eagles farm system. I trust their ability to develop offensive linemen. So I don't feel, I don't feel a dire need to draft an offensive lineman in the first or even the second round. Um, but I do understand your sentiment, Cameron. I do. Um, I talked about it earlier. Um, I don't want to leave this draft without having two offensive linemen. An um a tackle and a guard. So uh so I, I hear you, but I'm just not drafting one in the first two rounds. All right. So, so as of right now, we got Cooper DeJohn and Edrin Cooper. Um, now look at this. Let's see. Braylon Trice, edge rusher out of Washington, 6'3, 245. Okay. I think I will go with Whoa. It's a big dude. It's a big dude. I think I'm gonna go with uh Braylon Trice, edge rusher, uh out of Washington. Six three two forty five. I'm gonna go Brandon Trice. Um. Hmm. This is an interesting pickup. Hmm. Hmm. One fifty, one sixty eight, one seventy. Hmm. No. Let's see what let's let's see what's available first. McKinley Jackson. We're in the fourth round. Okay.
I think in this situation, Hmm. I think I'm going to go. I'm going to, I'm going to go, I'm going to go D line again. I'm going to go D line again. And I'm going to go McKinley Jackson out of Texas A&M. So as of right now, we got Cooper DeJean, Edgerton Cooper, Braylon Trice, McKinley Jackson. So we got a safety, we got a linebacker, we got an edge rusher, and we got a DT. All right, now. Ooh, he's right here. How many picks I got left? Okay, I'm good. I'm taking them. I'm taking him. Sorry, y'all. I'm taking him. Y'all gonna laugh at me, but I'm taking him. I'm taking Luke McCaffrey. <laughs> I'm taking. I'm taking Luke McCaffrey. <laughs> oh man, I'm taking McCaffrey, man. Fuck it. All right. Let's see. Where are we? All right. So let's see what we got left here. Huh. I probably should have went OT. Where the hell's the, the tackles? Okay, so cl clearly I don't got to reach for one. Clearly. Uh, let me see. Ooh, I like that. I'm gonna go guard. Ladarius Henderson out of Michigan. Mm. I think I'm going to trade back. I hate having to propose a trade because I got to do too much thinking. So let me see. I don't want any, any of these guys right now. How many picks I got left? I got three picks left. I want to get another offensive lineman. I want to get another offensive lineman. So I think at this pick, I'm going to pick another defensive player. Um, I think I'm going to go with... Yo, the linebacker position is just not the same anymore. All these guys are small as fuck. Mm. I'm going to go with Tommy Eckenberg, linebacker out of Ohio State. All right. tackle okay let's see here six eight through thirteen Ooh, i like those measurable i'm choosing uh frank crumb out of wyoming offensive of tackle so this is where we are right now you guys this this is the, this is our picks these are our picks thus far these are our picks so we have cooper design in the first round, 
We have Edron Cooper and Braylon Trice in the second round. Um, a linebacker and an edge rusher. We got McKinley Jackson, DT, out of Texas A&M. Luke McCaffrey, wide receiver out of Rice. Ladarius Henderson, guard out of Michigan. Tommy Eckenberg, Eckenberg um, linebacker out of Ohio State. Frank Crum, offensive tackle out of Wyoming. The reason I took a shot on Frank Crum out of Wyoming, I mean, do 6'8", over 300 pounds. I mean, I like that. I can roll with that. So um, I have one pick left. I have one pick left, and I've so far I've spent three of the picks on offense, two offensive linemen, and one wide receiver. Um, I've spent it on two, I've spent on the defensive side, two linebackers, a DT, and an edge rusher. Two linebackers, a DT, an edge rusher, and a safety or hybrid, however you want to describe them. And I think to end the draft. To end the draft, Georgia running back, interesting. Monty Bailey. Let's see what you guys are talking about. As Blunt says, go running back. I, I, was, I was thinking about that. Um, Paul Mancini says tight end or running back. I was thinking about that. Um, Cameron says Kamani Vidal. Uh, I think I'd much rather go running back. So let's see. Mm. Nah, way too small. I think I'm going to go with Dejan Edwards out of Georgia. All right, there you have it. We're done. These are our picks. What do you guys think? What do you guys think about this draft, this draft class? I don't think it's that bad. What do you guys think of this draft class? I don't think it's that bad. You got Cooper DeJean. You brought in Edron Cooper. Braylon Trice on, at the edge. McKinley Jackson on the D-line. Some of these guys, you're definitely taking a flyer on. Some of these guys, you're definitely taking a flyer on. Uh, but I, but I was, I've, I've been fascinated by Braylon Trice. Um, you know, when I read his profile, as a matter of fact, let me look up Braylon Trice's profile. So yeah, give me a grade, you guys. What's the grade of this draft class? What's the grade? Give me a grade. Uh, my man, looking for Sasuke. Uh, Sasuke says B plus. I'm not mad at it. Okay, that's reasonable. That's reasonable. B plus. Cameron Holmes says B. Okay, I can roll. I, I can roll with that. Paul Mancini says he doesn't like it. All right. Joe Marucci says not that bad. Got some bench and special teams players. Uh, it's needed to win championships. You know, another thing I was thinking about, right? You got a guy in Braylon Trice who, like, can he, can he, uh, if if you draft him, can he compete for some reps, right? Can he be a part of that four or five man rotation? We we know BG is on a farewell tour and BG is not going to be playing as many snaps as we would like him to play. So do, uh, could a combination or a rotation with Josh Sweat, Bryce Huff, Nolan Smith, BG, and you throw in Braylon Trice into that, and he's learning, and you're not asking him to be the guy per se, but you're asking him to come in and just make some plays. 
I don't mind having Braylon Trice there. I like the size of the position as well. Uh, let me make sure I got this right here. I think Braylon Trice. There it is. Braylon Trice, 6'4", 245. I mean, I like the size at the position. I like that. 6'4", 245. Braylon Trice, I like that. Jonathan Harvey gives it an A+. Plus. Joe, Mar Joe Marucci says B+. Plus. Fitness Warriors says B+. Plus. S. Blunt says B+. Plus. Paul Mancini says BG should not even be on the roster for 2024, to be honest. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you, Paul Mancini. I'm not going to lie to you. I definitely was. I definitely was of the mindset of you got to move on and figure out life beyond him. But you know, we'll see. Cameron Holmes says the thing with Trice is he doesn't bend well, but he sets the edge well. I can roll with that. I I, I can roll with the guy that that knows how to set the edge, and I, I can build off of that uh, rather than a guy who has bend but he can't set the edge. You know, meaning he can't stop the run, he can't do none of those things outside of rush the passer. So, um. I can work on I can work on uh Braylon Trice's bending. That can be worked on, but setting the edge, that's a mentality. And I like that. Uh relative time work says solid B plus. Okay, I appreciate that. Shanae says B. See, I like seeing the B's because that tells me that you know this is this is more realistic than what you know some people may give it, give it credit for. Um, my man PFT says I would have gone linebacker at 53. I like Luke McCaffrey. He'll be the next Puka. <laughs> I've ended up with Trice a few times in my mocks. Solid B plus. Okay. Word. I appreciate that. Joe Marucci says that's exactly how we that, that, that's exactly how we go. How, how that's exactly how we go in to replace BG. If we get BG playing 35% of the plays, so we need to bring in some youth AD. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Agreed, Joe. Like we, we gotta have some guys that's gonna be able to take some of that. Take some of that pressure off of uh off of BG because one of the reasons why that the the, the D line kind of fell off by the wayside is they didn't have enough depth at the edge position. I mean, after Hassan and Josh Sweat, you weren't you weren't really getting anything from Nolan Smith and BG. They wasn't giving him any snaps, so you probably want to you'd probably want to bring in another edge rusher to add into that group to take some of the pressure off. Um, and then you again again you never know what the future may hold if Brandon Trice come, turns into a player that you can trust. Nolan Smith, maybe you move on from Josh Sweat and you can roll and you get cheaper at the position and you get maybe the same production, if not more. See, that's the thing you got to think about, you guys, right? When you draft a guy like Braylon Trice or when you draft an edge rusher in general, if the Philadelphia Eagles can get the same production or more production out of a rookie as they got out of Josh Sweat, they'll they'll take the risk of moving on from Josh Sweat and leaning in on the young guys that are on rookie deals. That's the that's the that's the perfect scenario for most of these teams, right? If you have a guy entering a contract year and you draft the guy at his position, if you, if that guy come if the new guy comes in and gives you quality reps, quality snaps, and he's very productive, but you know with his limited opportunities, there's a chance that you may say to yourself as the GM, "Well, why would I pay you big money if I got a young guy right here who did what he did with his opportunities and he's only going to get better?" So, um. I think I, I think it's entirely possible the Philadelphia Eagles draft an edge rusher um, with the mindset or the hope that he can be productive enough where they don't have to invest big money or any kind of long term money to Josh Sweat, and they can get cheaper at the position, and they get younger, probably get more healthier too. Uh, Paul Mancini says I'd say a C plus tone, not crazy about one twenty um, on outside of linebacker Eckenberg Eckenberg. Okay, that's reasonable. That's reasonable. Joe Marucci says that's how you manage the cap, taking advantage of rookie contracts. It's also, it also keeps the team young. Yes, it keeps the team young helps you helps you manage the cap. Um, also gives you flexibility. Gives you a lot of flexibility, and it buy and, and it buys you time. That's another thing too. If you guys are just joining the live stream. Um, make sure you guys smash the like button. We just got finished uh, doing our first uh, seven round mock draft. This is part two, though. This is the second live stream of mock drafts that we've done so far. Um, but this is the first mock draft of the of the evening. So we're gonna do we're gonna do it a, a few a couple more times to see what we do. So let me uh, as a matter of fact, let me screenshot this. 
Let me screenshot this so I can uh, have this as a reference. There we go. Capture. Boom. All right. Let's see. All right. Let's start from the beginning. All right, seventh round, mock draft. Put it on fast. Pick it for the Philadelphia Eagles. All right, let's get this show on the road. Enter solo draft. Let's see. Mm. Uh, I'm going to decline that. Interesting. Too bad I can't take advantage of a 2025 first round pick in the mock draft. So I'm cool. Oh, for the record, you guys, I don't accept any trade offers that have any have any picks for the following year in mock drafts because that doesn't serve me any at this point. So uh, I'm going to disregard this. Reject. All right, so let's see who got taken. Brian Thompson, Brian Thomas Jr., wide receiver, Nate Wiggins got taken. Okay. J.C. Latham, Queen and Mitchell got taken. Like Atu Latu, Brock Bowers, Merritt Mims, Dallas Turner, J.J. McCarthy. Mm. Yeah, that makes more sense now. This mock draft so far makes more sense. Okay. I could definitely see the Chiefs drafting a wide receiver in the first round. I could definitely see that. All right. So last last go around, we drafted uh Cooper DeJean in the first round. So let's go a little differently here. Let's go a little differently. So I'm seeing a lot of you guys pulling for chop. Kool-Aid is on the board. Yeah, it, it, it is kind of hard to pass up Chop Robinson right here. It is kind of hard to pass him up, so I can't. I, I got to pick him. It's near impossible. It, I can't pass him up right here. I just can't. Hmm. Huh. Who's on the board, though? Wow, Cooper DeJean fell to the second in this mock draft? That's crazy. Oh, Xavier Leggett went, went quicker, too. Huh. Okay. This just got more interesting. Michael Penix going to the Giants in the second round. Interesting. Edger and Cooper is gone. Okay. All right. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, so where I pick, where are we? I think I might trade back. I think I might trade back. I think that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to trade back. Yeah, I'm going to trade back. Where is it? Except. Yeah. Trade back. All right. So let's see. On the board, we have. 
Kamari Lassiter, 5'11", out of Georgia. See, I don't want to keep going Georgia. I think I might take – see, his – Peyton Wilson, his health is – like, Peyton, well, his health is – like – I hear what you guys are saying, but his health, man. But it's a mock draft, so why not, right? It is a mock draft. You need a linebacker. You do. And I got another pick coming up soon, so I'll draft him. But can can I – am I reaching for him? Can, will he be there in the next four picks? I think he. I think he will. Mm. There's no guarantee. Um. All right, fuck it. All right. Reject. Huh. That's too far back for me. That's too far back. But then again, hmm. Fuck it, let's see. Accept. All right. Reject. Reject. All right. Now, so we got an edge rusher and a linebacker. Chot Robinson and Peyton Wilson. Got some more draft picks in the process. Uh, at this point, what I would do... six four two ninety eight. Roman Wilson, 5'10". No. Hmm. Oh, Jeremiah Trotter Jr. is still here. Hmm. This this may be overzealous, but why not? So as of right now, we got the edge and two linebackers. Next, I want to go. Cade Stover, 6'3", 247. Obviously, we're at Alabama, Jermaine Burton. Hmm. I think I'm going to go Jermaine Burton, wide receiver, out of Alabama. Hmm. Now we're going to reject those. Wait, hold on. Where's my next pick? Where's my 25 ones? No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Decline. Reject. So, so far, this is our picks right here. These are our picks right now so far. These are our these are our picks. So, we got Chop Robinson. We got Peyton Wilson. We got Jeremiah Trotter. We got Jermaine Burton. Just want to get, just want to give myself another bullet in the gun. Enough bullets in that linebacker gun. All right. So, Tanner Bordellini. Six four three zero three. Hmm. We got all defensive guys on one wide receiver. T 
Tanner Born Elite, he's 6'4", 303. I could probably use him. I could probably use him between guard and center. Draft him. Whoa, they want to give me all these for this one pick. Huh. Fuck it, I'll accept. Got a lot of picks. So let's see here. Got a ton of picks. Got a lot of picks to make. We got a lot of picks, you guys. Look at this. We got a we got a lot of picks to make. So I still have, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I still got seven picks. My man S. Blunt says, next call in link, make sure to do a mock draft. Yeah, I can do that. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. I like that. That'd be, dope. That'd be cool. Reggie McCant says, uh, Cooper Dijon is trash. Oh, I mean, teach his own. Shout out to my man S. Blunt, by the way, for donating to the channel. All right, where were we? Let's see. Johnny Dixon, corner out of Penn State, 5'10", 188. Ah. Jalen Charlies, safety out of Missouri, 6'2", 227. Okay. Mm -hmm. Eric all tight end in Iowa got to take him Eric all when I see when I see tight end and Iowa in the same sentence I'm I'm I'm, I'm taking a swing on it mm -mm. All right let's see where we are Defense. Who's available at corner? Jarvis Brownlee, Louisville. Uh, what's the measurables for Jarvis Brownlee? Jarvis Brownlee. 5'10", 194. Hmm. Let's see. Bill's Mafia. He says, Tone, I have you playing every day at my car shop waiting room. Hey, man, I appreciate that. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool, man. Shout out to Bill's Mafia. Shout out to uh, his car shop as well. Appreciate you guys for being loyal to the soil. Appreciate the love, man. Really do. All right, so. Let's see. All right, where was I? <laughs> oh, man. Paul Mancini says, how many picks make the roster tone? Be careful of trading back too often. Yeah, you know, it's, it's funny. I hardly, I hardly ever do trades when I do this. So I try to approach all of them differently. You know what I'm saying? Um, this, like, my, my approach to this mock draft in particular goes against my entire philosophy. I don't really do trades in mock drafts. I try to, I try to, I try to stand pat. Um, so I definitely understand. I definitely understand where you're coming from for sure. And you definitely don't want to trade back too often. But I just wanted to try something different. You know, I wanted to. Uh, I kind of wanted to just, you know, get a, you know, just get a feel for a different philosophy. And just to see what what prospects can we fall on. So let's see. Let's get back to it. Um, you guys mentioned some corners. I'm trying to remember if I got you. Uh, let me see. Uh, who was it? Paul Mancini mentioned, mentioned Kyrie Robinson, um, or King from Penn State. 
Cam from Notre Dame. Let's see. DeCamrian Richardson. I remember him. Quentin Newsom. His name is Storm Duck. That is hilarious. So, yeah, these are all the corners that are left. They might got some of these guys wrongly labeled, too. But as of right now, we got Chop Robinson on the edge, Peyton Wilson at linebacker, Jeremiah Trotter Jr. at linebacker, Jermaine Burton at wide receiver, Tanner Bordellini at offensive line, at interior offensive line. You got safety Jalen Charlies, and you got tight end Eric All out of Iowa. So we got three offensive players and four defensive players. We got an edge rusher, two linebackers, and a safety. Um, we should probably definitely get a corner. Um, uh, see, at this point, I start thinking about the competition you went up against. N N N uh, Nehemiah Pritchett, uh, Auburn, meaning he's in the SEC. Who do you guys think I should pick at corner with these guys I'm looking at? Who do you guys think I should pick? James, Stella, thank you so much for the love, my man. I appreciate it. Thank you for the support. Uh, I'm just going to uh, – Aishan says, I like the two linebacker pickup, to be honest. Yeah, that's different, right? See, I, I'm trying to I'm trying to be – I'm trying to think outside of the box a little bit. That's all. I'm just trying to do something different, keep it entertaining, keep it fresh. I think I'm going to go with Jarvis Brownlee. Ooh. All right, let's see. All right. Isaac Garendo, six. Ooh. Think I'm going to go running back right here. Actually, you know what? You can never have too many edge rushers. I'm going to draft another one. And then I'm going to go running back. Isaac Garendo. All right. So far, you guys, we have Chop Robinson on the edge for the Philadelphia Eagles. Peyton Wilson, linebacker. Jeremiah Trotter Jr., linebacker. Jermaine Burton at wide receiver. Tanner Bortolini at interior offensive line. Jalen Charlie's at safety. Eric All, tight end out of Iowa. Jarvis Brownlee, corner out of Louisville. Cedric Johnson, edge rusher out of Ole Miss. And we have a running back, Isaac Garendo, out of Louisville. I want to get another offensive lineman, though. Caden Wallace. Six four three fourteen. How tall is Lane Johnson? Six six. Let me see something. Six five. Frank Crum. I think I. Picked him last time. Six, seven, three, fifty three. Um, huh, interesting. What I'll do is I will draft I want to draft Dylan McMahon guard out of NC State and then if he's still there which he might not be 
And he's not. Then I'm going to go tackle. Mm. Nathan Thomas, 6'5", 332. I like that. Then we're going to go tackle. And we're done. All right. There you have it. So this is our drive class, you guys. Tell me what you think. This is our drive class. Tell me what you think. Give me a grade. It's a lot of players, by the way. We got we drafted 12 guys. We drafted 12 guys. So tell me what you guys think. Make sure you guys smash the like button. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel, especially if you're new. Make sure the notification button, the, 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 the notification button is definitely selected. Let you guys know whenever I go live, whenever content hits the hits the uh the flow. Um, I'm your guy, Tone the Shift the Second. You guys are locked in on Chalk It Up Sports, where no matter if we win or if we lose, we just gotta charge it to the game. Uh what, what's your guys' thoughts on this draft class? Um, we were able to bring in 12 bodies. 12 bodies, and uh okay, so I'm seeing C minus C, C, B minus. Okay, now um, I'm curious to know how you guys are making sense of it, right? Um, I want to know what you guys think. Um, B minus says because of no cornerback. Well, I did drive the corner. Um, Jarvis Brownlee, I did drive the corner. Let me zoom in, make sure you get a clear view of that. I did drive the corner, though. In case you're wondering, I did draft the corner. His name is Jarvis Brownlee. I did draft the corner. <clears throat> I shine if, if you're curious. But here was so my so my approach. Um my my approach to this one was I wanted to obviously draft guys I didn't draft before. But I also wanted to approach it from the from the prospect of let me give myself enough players uh, to play around with, right? Let me let me let me give the Philadelphia Eagles enough bullets, enough bullets in the gun. Mm. Brian Grant says D plus. You didn't take enough risk to improve the roster. Too safe. So define. So what's your definition of risk? What's your definition of risk? So, Edger and Cooper was taken before I had a chance to get him. Um, Dijon, I, di I didn't pick him because I chose him in the first round last time. So, I, again, context is very important. I'm trying to approach these mock drafts with a different philosophy. Um, each and every uh, uh, each and every time I do it, I'm trying to I'm trying to shift my perspective and shift my approach. Um, just because I drafted this way, this 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 wouldn't be my, my normal my normal path. Uh, I I did trade back a few times in this upcoming draft. I did trade back. Um, if you guys have seen me do mock drafts before, I don't normally do too many trades. I like to stand pat and uh, make it work with what I have. Um, but I but again, I look at it like this, right? Um, let's let's just think about it from a position perspective. Um, ultimately, we have no idea what these, what any of these guys are going to bring to the table. We're, we're all guessing at the end of the day. Um, that's the part that needs to be put in perspective as well. We're all guessing at the end of the day. But So let's just look at it from a positional standpoint, right? So let's just start with the edge, right? At edge, you at edge, I brought in Chop Robinson and another edge rusher and Cedric Johnson out of Ole Miss. So we brought it. So we drafted two more edge rushers, right? Um, we drafted two linebackers in Peyton Wilson and Jeremiah Trotter Jr. Arguably two of the more talented guys in the, you know, in the draft, that linebacker. Um, people have their own opinions about Jeremiah Trotter's size and all that kind of stuff. But, um, Peyton Wilson and Jeremiah Trotter Jr. Um, those are two names that if you draft both of those guys, one of those guys has to pan out. Right. Um, and then. Uh, Jermaine Burton, wide receiver out of Alabama. I feel like that's a steal um, at that spot. And then uh, at the offensive line, 
brought in Tanner Bordellini at interior offensive line out of, out of Wisconsin. Brought in Dylan McMahon, interior offensive line out of NC State. And Nathan Thomas, um, offensive tackle out of Louisiana. So we brought in three offensive linemen in this draft. Um, so two edge rushers, two linebackers, three offensive linemen, a wide receiver. Uh, we brought in a tight end and Eric All out of Iowa. I'm telling you, if it's Iowa and it's a tight end, I'm trusting it. George Kittle, Sam Laporta. You know what I'm saying? If if, if it's an Iowa tight end, I'm taking a swing. I'm taking a swing. Um, I brought in uh, a running back out of uh, Louisville. You know, who knows what he can do with a running back. Um, then we brought in a safety, Jalen Charlie's out of Missouri, a corner, two DBs. So we got so we left this draft with two DBs. So again, right? I know, I know a lot of you guys look at the names and aren't really impressed, right? But let's just look at the positions first. Let's start there and try to see if to try to see if this draft class is a bit better than what maybe you guys initially thought, right? And again, I do appreciate you guys providing your grades. Um, a lot of you guys gave it a B minus, C, C minus, so on and so forth. Um, I respect that, right? But let's just start with let's just start with the positional uh, the positions. We brought in two edge rushers. We brought in two linebackers. We brought in three offensive linemen. We brought in two DBs. And we brought in three skill position guys with wide receiver, tight end, and running back. In my opinion, when you look at it from that perspective, not that bad. Not that bad at all. That's just that, that's that's just my perspective. Now, you know, if we want to nitpick the prospects, sure, have at it. We can have at it. <clears throat> Brian Grant says the Eagles have old linemen that are young that need to develop. So some of these picks are just throwing darts at, at a board, not approving the roster. I disagree because when I look at this depth chart right now, um. Who are you talking about? That had, they had, like who are you, who are you referring to? Are you talking about Tyler Steen? Are you talking about Cam Jurgens? Because those guys are projected starters. At the end of the day, Brian Grant, and I appreciate you. I appreciate you locking in on the show. But here's the reality, and I think you notice: know you can never have too many offensive linemen. Never. Let's just let's just call it what it is. That's that's that's. I think I think you noticed though. This is this is football 101. You can never have too many offensive linemen. Never. You lost Jason Kelsey. You lost Jack Driscoll. You lost Sua Opeta. You lost three offensive linemen in free agency and retirement. And I drafted three. Are you that sold on the Raven Clark? Are you that sold on? Fred Johnson, are you that sold on Brett Toff, Lacita Smith, Jason Poe, Darian Kennard? Are you are you that sold on those guys? I mean, Paul Mancini says the Eagles' current O line depth is the weakest it's been in fifteen years. You know, fifteen years is a pretty large window. I would say it's the weakest it's been, and you know, in you know, in a while, in a minute, it's the weakest it's been. So, again. When you think about the way the Philadelphia Eagles build their team and you can never have too many offensive linemen and the way this defense played last year, you best believe I'm throwing darts at the board. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm making sure I'm making sure this team has, especially in, in this particular mock draft. Um, again, I approached it very differently, but I wanted to make sure in this one they had enough prospects, enough talent to play around with. And also to replenish some depth, because, again, BG is not going to be here in the following year. Uh, what's Josh Sweat's future? What's Milton Williams' future? Lane Johnson, what's his future? So, um, you know, when I when I think about it from that perspective, you lost Jason Kelsey, you lost Sue Opeta, you lost Jack Driscoll. Um, Matt Hennessy's coming off of an injury. Can he stay healthy? Cam Jurgens, 
Um, Landon Dickerson, although Landon Dickerson just got paid, and although Cam Jurgens, we got a lot of faith in him, can those two stay healthy consistently? Those two have battled their own knick-knack, ticky-tack injuries throughout the seasons. They have. That's a fact. So for me, from my perspective, you can never have too many offensive linemen. You can never have too many offensive linemen. So, um, again, just you know, just reiterating it, um, I, I I decided to bring with with twelve picks. By the way, we we traded back a, a couple times in this thing. Brought in two edge rushers. That immediately helps your pass rush. You brought in two two more edge rushers. Um, added two more linebackers to compete with Devin White, Nicobe Dean, guys like that. So two edge rushers, two linebackers. Two DBs as well, a safety and a corner. Remember, the Eagles did bring back Avante Maddox. They did sign Tyler Hall. They did bring in C.J. Garner-Johnson. They brought in three DBs via free agency. So I decided to bring in two more DBs via the draft, one safety, one corner. I think that's pretty reasonable. Um, So two edge rushers, two linebackers, two DBs, three offensive linemen, Two come two with the interior and one at tackle, um, or a running back, a receiver, and a tight end. I think I think I addressed every need still. Let's see. And again, this is only because I had 12 picks. I I normally wouldn't have this have this many picks. <clears throat> All right. But nonetheless, though. Uh but nonetheless, um, let me screenshot this. Um again, this is all for fun. And we're just trying to we're just trying to get a sense for what's possible. So let me screenshot this. Give me a second, you guys. <clears throat> Screenshot that. All right, let's do another one. Let's do another mock draft. <clears throat> Brian Grant raises a very good question. What are you doing with Nolan Smith if you bring in two more edge rushers? Well, let's keep it in context. Once again, um, Chop Robinson, you drafted him in the first round, so he's going to – and again, context matters, right? I'm looking at it from this perspective. You got Bryce Huff, Josh Sweat, right, as your as, as your front line guys. Then you got BG and Nolan Smith. Now, obviously, in my opinion, BG is not going to play that many snaps. I think you know that, Brian. BG is BG might not even sniff 30% of the snaps. BG might hang around 20 to 25% of the snaps. Um, Nolan Smith, um, he still has to pan out and prove that he's a player. So what I want to do is I want to light more fire under his ass. I'm going to bring in Chop Robinson at edge to add to that rotation because I don't trust BG over the extent of a full season, and I don't trust Nolan Smith over the extent over a full season. Um, And then I brought Cedric Johnson in on the back end of the draft. Maybe he makes the roster, maybe he doesn't, but you have another player at edge that you can you know that you can go to. Maybe he's on your practice squad. You never know. But in my opinion, you can never have too many guys – that's competing. So Nolan Smith is going to get his opportunity. Don't get don't don't get it twisted. He's going to get his opportunity, but that's on him. That's on Nolan. That's on him. Because because I think the Eagles are drafting the edge rusher in this draft. No, you good, Brian. No, Brian, you good. Brian, you good. I know. Brian, you good. Trust me, you are good. It's 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 a part of the show, though. It's a part of the show for sure. No, you good, Brian. You know, the reality is no one has to prove it. No one has to come in and prove it still, regardless. And I like Nolan, but I want to keep that pressure on. I want guys to know, listen, we're going to continue to do whatever it takes to get this to make this roster better. And if that means drafting a guy at your position, so be it. <clears throat> That's all that is. But yeah, let's do another one before we get out of here, you guys. Let's do another mock draft before we get out of here. Let me uh remove this. Thank you again, you guys, for locking in on the content. Shout out again to my guy S. Blunt for donating to the channel. 
really appreciate him. All right. Okay, let's drag. Let's do this thing one more time. Restart. All right. Philly. Seven rounds. Put it on fast. And for this final one. Um, for this final one, I'm going to lean more on you guys, right? So I want you guys to keep in mind, everybody on the YouTube side, on the X side, I want you guys to comment in the live chat um, as this mock draft goes, because for the, you know, for the first two, I kind of did my own, made my own decisions, right? For, for this, for this final one of the evening, I want you guys to give your opinions and I'm going to draft based off of your opinions. I'm going to draft this I'm going to I'm going to do this mock draft based off of the majority based off of um the insight that I get from you guys. So if you guys want to be want to be a part of this, make sure you guys are interactive or are, are, are interacting in the live stream, make sure you guys are paying attention because I'm definitely going to rely on you guys to you know to to make these picks and then we're going to and then we're going to think about it from there. Okay? So every decision we make, it's going it's it's being vetted by you guys for the third and final mock, mock draft of the evening. So, uh let's get this show on the road. All right, we got our settings. All right, let's do an inter solo draft. Let me zoom out a little bit. All right, here we are. So I'm obviously not trading with Atlanta. Should I take Tampa Bay's offer? What do you guys think? Should I accept Tampa Bay's offer? Or 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 do you want to look at the board first? Should I take the offer or do you want to look at the board first? Don't take it. All right. Say less. Reject. Reject. All right. Who do y'all want? Who do y'all want? So as of right now on the board, DT Johnny Newton, DT Byron Murphy, the second edge rusher, chop Robinson, DB Cooper DeJean, interior offensive lineman, Graham Barton, interior offensive lineman, Jackson Powers, Johnson, Kool-Aid McKinstry, Michael Penix, Tyler Guyton, Adani Mitchell, wide receiver, Xavier Worthy, wide receiver, Bo Nix, Keon Coleman, wide receiver, Kingsley, Sua, Sua Matea, tackle, Jordan Morgan, tackle, Chris Haynes, guard. Um, how do you guys want to play it? Let's see. So... Bill says Dijon, MJS says Kool-Aid, Fitness Warrior says Dijon, Prince Soyuz says Dijon, Lorenzo says Kool-Aid, Chin A says Dijon. I'm seeing a lot of Dijon. MJS says Cooper or Kool-Aid. Um, so how about this? So since I went Dijon already, I'm going to go Kool-Aid, okay? We're going to do that. I did Dijon. I did Cooper Dijon already. So... Um, wait, so, hmm, could I trade back? No, I'm not going to take a risk. I'm not going to take a risk. So I'm going to take Cooper. I mean, I'm sorry, Kool-Aid McKinstry, the same Kool-Aid. All right. Reject. All right. Who do you guys want next? So who do you guys want next? So uh, right now we have we're at the fiftieth pick, Rook, or uh, Oro DT out of Clemson, Cooper BB guard out of Kansas State, Edger and Cooper linebacker out of Texas A and M, and it's Rake Straw, Leonard Taylor the third DT, Chris Broswell edge, Patrick Paul tackle, Jalen Polk wide receiver. Michael Hall Jr., DT, Kamari Lasseter, corner, Braylon Trice, edge, Ben Sinnott, tight end, Chris Jenkins, DT, Peyton Wilson, linebacker, Jonathan Brooks. And remind you guys, we have the 50th and the 53rd pick. So what are you guys thinking? I'm seeing Ed Cooper, Edger and Cooper, Ed Cooper, Cooper, um, Cooper. I already got Kool-Aid, Brian. Uh, 
Uh, Cooper, Cooper. Okay, so you guys want Edge and Cooper again? All right, no worries. We'll go. We'll go Edge and Cooper. <laughs> As Blunt said, you already know Cooper. <laughs> All right, bet. All right, uh, Edge and Cooper draft. All right, now reject. Wow, Minnesota's giving all this up for the 53rd overall pick. Would you guys take this? They're giving up a lot. Would you guys take that? What do you guys think of that? Chin says no. Fitness Warrior says no. Okay. All right. Let's not go. We're not going to do it then. Reject. All right. So, as of right now, we got two defensive players. We got Kool-Aid McKinstry out of Alabama, cornerback. Got Edrin Cooper, linebacker, out of Texas A&M. So, um, who do we add to this? I think we should go offensive line right here. I think we should go Patrick Paul, offensive tackle out of Houston. I think we should go Patrick Paul right here. What do you guys think? Cooper BB. Got taken already. Cooper BB is no longer on the board. The Rams took Cooper BB. So I think I should go, in my opinion, I think I should go Patrick Paul. Offensive tackle out of Houston. Um, 6'7", 331. It's a lot of size, man. I like that. Ishan says edge. Brian Grant says trade back. Cheney says trade down. Bills Mafia says Patrick Paul. As Blunt says, scroll down. Fitness Warrior says, Ricky Parasol. So, all right, let's see. So, these are the guys left. Rook Orojo, Leonard Taylor III, Chris Broswell, Patrick Paul, Jalen Polk, Michael Hall Jr., Kamari Lassiter, Braylon Trice, Ben Sinnott, Chris Jenkins, DT, Payne Wilson, Jonathan Brooks, Cedric Gay, Gray. What are you guys thinking about? What do you guys think? I don't want to go too far because at this point I'm reaching. So I don't want to go too far. What are you guys thinking? Patrick Paul. That's what I was thinking. Patrick Paul, old lineman, right? Patrick Paul. Again, I like the measurables. You know, 6'7", 331. I like that. So we're going Patrick Paul at offensive line. All right. All right, here we are. Pick 120. So left on the board, now remind you, we have a, we have a, a DB, a linebacker, and an offensive tackle. We got Kool-Aid McKinstry cornerback edrin cooper linebacker patrick paul offensive tackle now left on the board you have Dwayne carter dt out of duke Jaden hicks safety washington state aldrick esteem running back out of notre dame delmar glaze tackle out of maryland tyron hopper linebacker out of missouri michael pratt quarterback out of tulane tanner bordellini Interior offensive lineman, Wisconsin. Dylan Laub, running back, New Hampshire. Jalen Wright, running back, Tennessee. Brandon Coleman, interior offensive lineman, TCU. Kyrie Jackson, Kyrie Jackson, cornerback, Oregon. Jamar, Jamari Thrash, wide receiver out of Louisville. Ray Davis, running back out of Kentucky. Cam Hart, cornerback out of Notre Dame. Marshawn Lloyd, running back out of USC. Theo Johnson, tight end, Penn State. Brendan Rice, wide receiver out of USC. Jerrion Jones, cornerback out of Florida State. Jared Wiley, tight end out of TCU. What are you guys thinking about? What are you guys thinking about? So. Kamara. MJS says we can use a running back. As Blunt says, wide receiver there is safety. Uh, safety, best available safety. Okay, let's see. Because I don't want to reach for a wide receiver either. So let's see best available safety. 
The best available safety is Jaden Hicks, safety out of Washington State. The best available wide receiver is Jamari Thrash and Brendan Rice. So these are the best available wide receivers right now to the right. Jamari Thrash, Brendan Rice, Jacob Cowing, Javon Baker, Luke McCaffrey. And then the best available safeties, Jaden Hicks, Taki Smith, Keaton Oladapo, Jalen Charlies, Kenny Logan Jr. What are you guys thinking? Brian Grant says, take Jalen Wright. He's a steal. Take Jalen Wright. Take Jalen Wright. All right, say less. Jalen Wright. Jalen Wright. Uh, let me see. Where is he? Wait, where'd he go? Oh, here it is. Running back out of Tennessee. You guys are talking about the running back out of Tennessee, right? You're talking about the running back, right? Are you guys talking about the running back or are you talking about um, Jaden Hicks? Which one? I'm confused. Jaden Hicks? Jaden Hicks is the safety. Okay, the safety. All right, I see. All right. Jaden Hicks, Washington State, safety. All right, let's see where we're at. Huh. The Vikings are offering up some picks. What do you guys think of this? What do you guys think? Should I accept? Should I accept? Would you guys accept this trade? As Blunt says, yes. Bill's Mafia says, yes. <clears throat> All right. Fitness Warrior says, now I would. Okay. All right. That's three people. All right. Let's accept. All right. Now. Just a reminder, you guys, we have one, two, three, four, five picks left. We have five picks left. We chose Cooley McKinstry, cornerback, Edron Cooper, linebacker, Patrick Paul, offensive tackle, Jaden Hicks, safety. So we got two DBs, a linebacker, and a tackle. I like this draft so far. Just, just to make it clear to you guys, I like that. I like our draft class thus, thus far. Thus far, what are you guys thinking about the draft class? So far, to the left, you see Cooley McKinstry, Edron Cooper, Patrick Paul, and Jaden Hicks. So far, what's your thoughts on this draft class for the Philadelphia Eagles so far? So far. Bill's Mafia says B plus so far. Okay. All right. Chene says A minus so far. As Blunt says, Zach Zinter, Bell, or Luke McCaffrey. Joe Marucci says A minus. Fitness Warrior says A <laughs> Oh, man. What would I do without you, Fitness? What would I do? All right. Let's see. So, um, so right now we got two DBs, a linebacker, and an offensive lineman. Um, I feel like I want a wide receiver. But I don't have to reach for one, do I? Zach Zinter, Michigan. Mm. Uh, Jaheim Bell, 6'2", 240. He's too small for me. I'm sorry. I'm going to go Zach Zinter. Offensive lineman. All right, Michigan. All right. I'm going to go Eric All again, tight end. Mm. 
All right, so here's our pick so far, you guys. We got Kool-Aid McKinstry at corner, Edron Cooper at linebacker, Patrick Paul at offensive tackle, Jaden Hicks at safety, Zach Zinter at interior offensive line, Eric All at tight end. So we drafted three off. We drafted uh, three offensive players and three defensive players. We drafted two DBs, two offensive linemen, a linebacker, and a tight end. Two DBs, two offensive linemen, a linebacker, and a tight end. What are you guys thinking? Jaheim Bell, I think he's gone. Yeah, I think he's gone. Yeah. Jaheim Bell's gone. <clears throat> As Blunt says, RB3. A lot of you guys are saying running back. Okay, let's let's look at the running backs. No problem. Let's look at the running backs. So offensive line. I'm sorry, offense running back. Um Tyrone Tracy Jr., running back out of Purdue, 5'11, 209. Blake Watson, running back out of Memphis. I'm cool. That's another Kenny Gainwell. George Halani, running back out of Boise State, 5'10, 208. Carson Steele, running back out of UCLA. Kamani Vidal, running back out of Troy. Dejan Edwards, running back out of Georgia. Who's appealing to you guys right now? As of right now, we have three picks left. We have three draft picks left. So far, we've drafted two DBs in Kool-Aid McKinstry and Jaden Hicks. We drafted two offensive linemen in Patrick Paul at tackle and Zach Zinter at interior offensive line. We drafted a linebacker in Edgerin Cooper, and we drafted a tight end in Eric All. So, and we have three draft picks left. We've drafted six players, and we have three picks left. Um, at the running back position, these are the guys that are left. Do any of these names stand out to you? Bills Mafia says Carson Steele because he has a cool name. No, I feel you on that. Um, as Blunt says, okay, three picks left, either wide receiver three or RB three. MJS says we need a thumper. I agree with you on that. We need somebody physical. We don't need nobody that's small. Um, we have I, I have Zinter already. I have Zinter. Um, I have Zinter for sure. My man Corey, what's good? Joe Marucci says throwing a running back, an offensive lineman, and a linebacker with the last three picks. So you want another old lineman after I've drafted two already. <laughs> Fitness Warrior says, Tone, for me, I'm going off of the people that visited us, so don't mind me. <laughs> uh, fit, the fit named Kinger. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, he says, Luke McCaffrey. Is he even on the board still? Luke McCaffrey is gone. Luke McCaffrey's not on the board anymore. Yeah, Luke McCaffrey's not on the board. But I do want to go offensive lineman. So, I mean, running back. So I'm thinking 511 209 sounds like some power. Mm, let's see. Carson Steele, six feet, 228. I think I might have to take that. All right, here we go. Final two picks. All right, where are we going with the final two picks, y'all? Where are we going? Corey, my brother, was good? So what are we doing with uh what are we doing for the final two picks, you guys? Just to give you a recap, we drafted Cooley McKinstry at corner, Edger and Cooper at linebacker, Patrick Paul at offensive tackle. Jaden Hicks at safety, Zach Zinter at guard, Eric All at tight end, and Carson Steele at running back. So we drafted three defensive players and four 
offensive players. Two of them are on the offensive line, one running back, one tight end. We got two picks left. Where do you guys want to go with it? Um, Joe Marucci says linebacker and all, all tackle. As Blunt says wide receiver three. Coach Corey says edge. I do got to get a wide receiver. I do got to get another receiver, though. I, I, I got to. I got to. I'm sorry. I got to. So um, at this point in the draft, I'm looking at traits, right? So 5'9", 182, nah, doesn't appeal to me. Uh, 5'10", 181, doesn't appeal to me. 5'8", 174, doesn't appeal to me. 6'1", 212, that appeals to me. Bub means. Huh. Mm. Who you guys liking at wide receiver? Uh, uh, let me see. He said, let me get my magnifying glass. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. Let's see. All right. Make sure you guys smash that like button on the way in. Make sure you guys smash it on the way out. I appreciate that. So. Let's see. Xavier Weaver. Oh, Xavier Weaver. He's, I remember him. Right. That's what I'm, that's how I feel. I, I'm, I'm comfortable with our offensive lineman situation right now. Um, I think I got to go wide receiver three, though, or another wide receiver. I got to, I got to go to another wide receiver. But means I'm gonna go Bub. My main name is Bub. All right. Or on the defense, I, I gotta get another defensive player. So I think I'm gonna end this draft with um I feel like I need to go either. I feel like I need to go edge or DT. I want to go defense for the final pick. So what are you guys thinking? D-line, MJS says go D-line. Joe Marucci. Um, that's why I chose Bub Means. He's like 6'1", 6'2", 210 pounds, 212 pounds. He's he's a he's a big dude. So um I decided to go with him, you know, you know, for the traits. Uh as Blunt says D tackle, MJS is D line, Bills Mafia says DT. Okay. All right, I think I think we got our I think we got our pick thing. And yes, as Blunt, that was Xavier Weaver from Colorado. That was, but I didn't pick him though. All right, uh, DT, Logan Lee, he's left on the board, 6'5", 281. Got the height, a little light, but he got the height. Edge, rush out of UConn, 6'5", 274. Ooh. You know, like, look, I understand some schools you're not impressed by, but if I see an edge rusher, 6'5", 274, um, I'm curious about that. I'm definitely curious about that. What do you guys think? 6'5", 274. I know he went to UConn, but, you know, do you take a flyer on a guy like this in the seventh round? Or do you just go DT? MJS says, why not? Those measurables are are, are legitimate. Bills Mafia says 100% get him. Because at this point in the draft, right, you're, you're kind of going off of traits. Right? Bills Mafia says get the edge. Joe Maruch says seventh round is perfect for the Flyers. Yeah, like I don't think there's anything wrong taking a Flyer on a 6'5", 274-pound edge rusher. Yeah, I think I'm going with that. You guys just convinced me. All right, Eric Watts. Edge rush out of UConn. All right, and we are done. All right, you guys. So here's our draft class. 
We ended up with 12 players. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Talk to me. So we left the draft with cornerback Kool-Aid McKinstry, linebacker Edron Cooper, offensive tackle Patrick Paul out of Houston, safety Jaden Hicks, interior offensive lineman Zach Zinter, tight end Eric All, running back Carson Steele, wide receiver Bub Means out of Pittsburgh, and edge rusher Eric Watts out of UConn. I actually like this. I actually like this one. I think this is my best one. I think this is my best one. I like this one. I like this one a lot. What do you guys think? S. Blunt says A. Fitness Warriors says B. Cheney says A minus. Joe Marucci says this is my favorite of them all. Bills Mafia says B plus. MJS says everything was definitely covered. Our biggest need is corner in my mind. <clears throat> As Blunt says, facts, the best one. See, some, see, see, trial and error, you guys. Trial and error. I appreciate this. Let me screenshot this one. This is my best one. This is my best one. Let me uh let me screenshot this. Oh, wait, no. No, 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 no. All right, there we go. Let me screenshot this. This is definitely my best one of the day. All right. Capture. Okay. So, so now this is a good one. B, okay. Paul Mancini says, this is the best one tone. Solid B+. Plus. I like that. Fitness Warrior says, what do you mean your best one? We chose this one. <laughs> Yo, fitness is an asshole. <laughs> oh, man. Fitness is an asshole. <laughs> hey, I had to convince you all for Patrick Paul, though. I had to I had to convince you of Patrick Paul. I chose Eric All. <laughs> I convinced you with Eric Watts. I chose Bub Means. You know what I'm saying? You got you guys picked Edgerin Cooper. You guys picked Kool-Aid McKinstry. Uh, you guys, you guys picked Jaden Hicks and Zach Zinter. Um, I think you guys chose Carson Steele too. But uh <laughs> oh man, but no, it was a good one though. We did a good job. We did it, we did a hell of a job. So um, I like this one, you guys. So uh yeah. So let's just, let's just let's just look at it from this perspective, right? Let's just go let's just go by position. So you drafted nine players, right? You drafted nine players. You left the draft with two DBs in Kool Aid McKinstry and Jaden Hicks. Two DBs. You drafted a linebacker in Edgerin Cooper. You drafted an edge rusher with Eric Watts. You drafted two offensive linemen and, uh, and, and a, a tackle and an interior guy, Patrick Paul and Zach Zinter. You drafted a tight end, Eric All, a running back, Carson Steele, and Bud Means, wide receiver. I mean, this isn't a bad draft class when you think about the free agency moves they made. Not a bad draft class at all. Two DBs, two offensive linemen, a linebacker, an edge rusher, a tight end, a running back, and a wide receiver. I like that. Not bad. Not bad at all. All right, you guys. That's it for the, that's it for today's show. Uh, I appreciate you guys for locking in on the content for as long as you guys have. I truly understand that you guys have a ton of options, yet you still come here to kick it with me every chance you get. And I definitely don't take that support for granted. So make sure you guys smash that like button if you haven't hit it already. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel as well. I'm always open and welcome to new patrons, you know, you know, to, to new uh, to new supporters of the show. I, I, you know, I don't I don't take you guys for granted. Shout out to my people on X. I, I really appreciate my Twitter family as well. You guys do a hell of a job supporting the show. I was staying locked into the live streams. Uh, it's really cool. I really appreciate the love and the support. Um, again, make sure you guys smash that like button. Make sure you guys are subscribed and make sure you guys also hit that notification bell. It, it reminds you whenever I go live. And there you have it, you guys. I'm your guy, Tone DeShields the second. And you guys were locked in on Chalk It Up Sports, where no matter if we win or if we lose, 
we just got to charge it to the game.